Constance Markievicz, The Rebel Countess by John and Fatty Burke, published by Gill. At the end of the story, there is a timeline and some facts you can read yourselves, although I might read a few of the facts that I like. But first, the story of Constance Markievicz. Constance Gore Booth was born in 1868. She grew up with her brothers and sisters in Lissadell House in Sligo. Her father was a wealthy landlord who was good to his tenants. Constance had a dream. She wanted Ireland to be free and its people to be treated fairly. Connie, as she was known by her friends and family, was brave and adventurous. She loved horse riding and hunting and painting. Her best friend was her sister Eva, who wrote poetry and plays. When she was 19, Connie went to Paris to study art. There she met a Polish count called Casimir Markiewicz. They got married and settled in Dublin, where they worked in theatre. Their daughter Maeve was raised in Lissadell. Constance joined Cumann Naman a women's group that wanted freedom for Ireland. She also co-founded a Boy Scout brigade called Nafina Erin, where boys were trained to fight for Ireland. In her old motor car, she would bring the boys camping in the Wicklow Hills, though she was often seen underneath her car doing repairs. Constance also joined the suffragettes, who wanted women to have the right to vote. They protested King George V's visit to Ireland, where Constance was arrested and sent to prison. But when she was released, she continued her work. In 1913, there was a big strike in Dublin, known as the Dublin Lockout. It lasted a really long time because the bosses wouldn't give in, so the poorest families went hungry. James Connolly organised the Irish Citizen Army to protect the workers, and Constance joined them. She even designed their uniforms. Constance set up a soup kitchen using her own money. She brought food and supplies to the tenements and often dragged bags of fuel up the stairs. The people loved her and called her Madam. Rebellion was in the air. In 1914, guns were smuggled into Hoth Harbour on board a ship called the Asgard and Constance and her boys helped to unload the weapons. The rising began on Easter Monday 1916. Constance made the green flag that flew over the GPO. She fought with the Irish Citizen Army in St Stephen's Green, where snipers shot at them. But Constance returned fire. They moved to the College of Surgeons, where they fought for six days, until they had to surrender. The leaders were brought to Kilmainham jail and were sentenced to death. Most of the leaders were executed, including Porrick Pierce, Tom Clark, Joseph Plunkett, Thomas Macdonough and Constance's good friend James Connolly. Because she was a woman, Constance was not executed, but she was sent to prison in Britain with hundreds of other fighters. In 1917, all the remaining prisoners were released, including Constance. They came back to Ireland as heroes and got a huge welcome. There was lots of celebration and a big parade. The following year, women won the right to vote. At the next election, 73 Sinn Féin members were successfully elected, including Constance. She was the first woman to be elected to the British Parliament, but she would not take her seat. Instead, Sinn Féin set up their own parliament in Dublin called the Dáil, with Constance as Minister for Labour. The Dáil was illegal and meetings were held in secret. Constance had no home now, so she moved from place to place, staying with friends. One evening, she heard that the police were coming So she put all her documents into a trunk and hid it in the window of a furniture shop. Luckily, the police didn't spot it. 
Peace finally came in 1921. A treaty was signed and Ireland became a free state, but not a republic. Many people were not happy about this and a civil war started. Constance travelled around the country speaking out against the treaty. One day, while starting her car, she broke her arm, but that didn't stop her. I'm glad it wasn't my jaw I broke, she said. I can still talk. The civil war ended and the free state won. Constance joined Eamon de Valera's new Fianna Fáil party and she was elected again. But Constance never got a chance to take her seat in the Dáil. She became very ill and was rushed to hospital. This brave and generous lady died poor but happy, surrounded by the people she loved. She lived to see the beginning of her dream of a free and fair Ireland. Facts that I liked. When her death sentence was changed to life imprisonment, Constance is reported to have said, I do wish your lot had the decency to shoot me. Another fact. When Constance died, the Free State Government refused to give her a state funeral. Her body was laid in a cinema, the Rotunda, where 100,000 people filed past as her body was taken to Glasnevin Cemetery. And my favourite fact, when asked for advice on how a lady should dress in those days, Constance said, dress suitably in short skirts and strong boots, leave your jewels in the bank and buy a revolver. Thank you.